Hello everyone and welcome to yet another video tute on the different content areas of visual arts. Uh, this particular video tutorial will focus on practice and practice can be separated into art making, art criticism and art history. You might know this as prac versus theory. All right, but we're going to look at what uh, each of these mean and how they connect and relate to one another to help you understand visual arts as a whole. As I said, practice can be separated into three key areas, art making, art criticism and art history. Now, in terms of practice as a whole, this particular content area or component deals with the doing of things in the world of the art. Okay, so it's all about the activities or actions that are happening within the visual arts. So, let's begin with art making. All right, when you're exploring art making, you're looking at artistic practice. And what makes up artistic practice is intentions plus choices plus actions. All right, so... Put simply, it's how the artist actually goes about making artworks. All right, this can be the artist that you're studying or yourself as an artist. Okay, you can see in this picture here, that's Robert Rauschenberg, for those of you who don't know. Um, and he is obviously very physically involved in his art making practice. Uh, and that's something that you would note if you were talking about this particular image. Now, um, if we look at uh, intentions, then we're looking at what the artist is aiming to do. All right, so what their ideas, thoughts, their perceptions, their plan, attitude. All right, so it's all about what the purpose is for their art. Okay, um, you then combine your intentions with choices. All right, so the artist has an idea of what they want to do and where they're going with their artwork, but they then need to make a series of choices that help them to get to that point. All right, so this can be choosing particular materials that they want to use, um, particular symbols. All right, they're looking at selecting exactly what they want in order to achieve their original intentions. Now, the third part is to then put those choices into action, all right? And this is the process of experimenting, investigating, and exploring um, different materials and techniques in order to create an artwork, okay? So the actions is the actual physical doing that enables an artist to achieve their intentions, So uh, when you're writing about an artist and their art making practice, uh, you firstly need to identify the artist, so who they are by name. All right? You can then locate the artist or artists, if you're looking at more than one, in terms of their style. And what this means is you're attempting to place them within a particular art movement. All right? And the way you do that is by looking at the different characteristics of the artwork and how they connect with a particular art movement. Okay, um, so for example, with cubism, uh, you can often identify a cubist work purely by the use of geometric shapes um, and almost a layering, I suppose, of imagery to the point where you can't fully make out uh, what is being depicted or shown to you. All right, um, you then need to move on to how the artist's intentions are seen in, in what they do and how they do it. Okay, so that, again, is looking at the idea of their choices and their actions and how those choices and their actions actually support their overall intentions. Okay, so it's really just going back to the slide before and what we were talking about then. Right. Now, obviously, if you're talking about an artist's art-making practice, you need to refer to their artworks. Okay? That's your evidence. Okay? That allows you to be able to back up your ideas of where they are in terms of style and characteristics of their work. Okay? Um, it also allows you to look at their practice, uh, their process that they go through. So what, um, do, what steps do they take in order to create an artwork? All right. Um, also, it allows you to have a look at the cultural traditions that may have been at play when that artwork was made. So you're looking at what was going on in the time and I suppose perceptions and what was considered 
worthy or uh, valid subject matter, for example, and how that may have dictated or influenced the artists and what they chose to create. All right, so that's where your link to the greater world and cultural context um, comes into play. The second component of practice refers to art criticism. Now, um, the objective of an art critic is to clarify and assess the qualities of an artwork, um, the process in which the artist goes through in order to create art, as well as how the audience may view, understand or appreciate the artwork. So if you're taking on the role of an art critic, uh, it's all about making a judgment about that particular artwork, about its value um, and it's about its worth. And Miss Phillips is calling me, so hold that thought. All right, so how does an art critic do this? Well, they interpret uh, the visual arts by investigating and writing about artworks, artists, styles, and audience responses. Okay, so this is happening over time, all right? And by doing that, they're also speculating about um, the meaning of the work, okay? And because they have such an understanding of art history and the way audiences have responded to work and um, have such knowledge about different styles within the art world, then they sort of use that to support their argument, okay? Um, and in their argument, they consider um, describing the artwork, all right? Um, and they interpret the artwork and what it could mean based on what they see, so the visual qualities, all right? So, again, it's all about uh, stating an opinion or making a judgment about that artwork and how good it is, all right? They really place value on it. So you're looking at the idea of that an art critic can really sort of have quite an influence in how the artwork and the artist too is perceived and appreciated or not appreciated by the art world at the time. The third component of practice is art history. And uh, what it is important to note that art history and art criticism, they complement each other. All right? So they are both looking at artworks in terms of style. They're, they're writing over time and they have a lot of knowledge about the art world over time. Okay, But their end goal in a lot of ways is, is quite different. So where a critic was looking at making a judgment or placing value on a work, an art historian is looking more at how they can link an artwork to events of the time or um, the way society and individuals thought and acted. All right? So it's all about placing the artwork within its context and how that context has or may have influenced the artist when creating the work. Now, in a similar way to a critic, they will provide accounts of how artist styles and artworks have evolved over time. All right. And they will um, evaluate the significance of culture. All right. So social, political, religious, gender, all right, anything that's happening in the world and how that may have shaped the artworks that were being created at the time. All right. So... In a lot of ways, it is just history, but a history of art, all right? And um, in order for that to sort of be shaped, they will identify particular characteristics within an artwork and link it to a particular time. And that's how we get art movements. So how do they do this? Well, it's all about studying art over time, all right? They have extensive knowledge about how artworks have been interpreted at a certain time and over time, all right? Um, when, through their writing, they consider, like the critic, uh, a definition of the artwork, all right? They also narrate the artwork, so they make that connection between what they're seeing, the visual features, and what was going on at the time and how they're connected, all right. They can also offer comparisons between artworks of different times of different art movements. All right. And they really place emphasis on the context of time and place and just how influential that is on the creation of artworks. 
Okay, so in terms of identifying uh, when you're being asked to talk about practice and which particular component within practice you're being asked to discuss, uh, it's all about identifying the keywords. Okay, so I've listed five questions on this particular slide. I want you to read through them and I want you to underline the keywords and then to the side of it, just write uh, which particular component or components, if you believe there's more than one, you're being asked to talk about um, in order to answer this question. All right, uh, pause this video or you can listen to the thinking music. Okay, I'm about to flick the slide over to the answers, so if you're not done, pause the video. Pause it now. Okay, so question one. Examine how historical and or critical judgments reveal meanings in artworks. In your answer, you could refer to art historians, critics, exhibition reviews, or interviews with artists or curators. Now this question, I suppose the words are a little bit more obvious because you have historical and critical judgment, okay? Now, it is important though, the fact that you've been given this and or means that you could talk about both um, history and criticism, or you could choose to focus on one. That's up to you, okay? Uh, question two, explain how judgments about Michelangelo's Peter represents different points of view, all right? Hopefully, you picked up on the key word being judgment, Okay, which means you're looking at criticism. Question three, how do the viewpoints of art critics and art historians shape the way we think about artists and their practice? Hmm, well, look, viewpoints of art critics and art historians, okay, so you're going to have to talk from both perspectives, all right, but you also are given the word practice here, all right, so in a lot of ways you will have to have all three, okay, so it's important that you would be talking about a critical perspective, a historical perspective, but your exploration of the practice is quite depth, um, sorry, in depth as well. Question four, evaluate the use of different materials and techniques in the development of an artist's body of work. Well, hopefully you got artist's body of work because it refers to, oops, art making. And question five, explain how and why the practice in visual arts evolves over time. In your answer, you may refer to artists and or art critics and or art historians. Okay, now this is a little bit more challenging because you've got this idea of art evolving over time. Okay, which means that you definitely have to talk about art history. Okay, but... You could also talk about critics because they have had an opinion on these artworks that have evolved over time, okay? And by referring to artists, you would have to talk about their practice, okay? So this one, you would draw on all three elements, okay? But because you're given the and or, you might choose to focus on one more than the other, okay? So it is important that you can break down the question and know which element you need to focus in on. Well... That wraps up our video tutorial on practice. I hope it has been helpful. Enjoy.